Hi everyone, welcome to another science class. Physics, Electricity, Part 3. Dear students, I would like to check your previous knowledge with a simple question. And the question is, potential difference between points A and B in an electric field is 1 volt. Explain the above statement. Or the same question can be asked as define 1 volt. But the answer remains same. That is, potential difference between points A and B in an electric field is 1 volt. It means 1 joule of work is done in moving 1 coulomb of charge from point B to point A in electric field as shown in below diagram. That is, from point B to point A. In the previous class, I explained about electric potential and potential difference. Electric potential is, it is the amount of work done to move a unit charge from infinity to a specific point. This means a battery with a sum stored energy, it can be 12 volts, 6 volts, 18 volts, whatever it can be. If you connect that a battery in a circuit, you are going to create electric pressure difference which is called as potential difference. But the definition says, it is the amount of work done to move a unit charge from one point to another point. If you observe the circuit diagram, here you are going to create the pressure difference when you connect a conductor with a lamp from point B to point A, where you are allowing the electron to do work to move from point B to point A. That can be given in the formula V is equal to W by Q. Let us learn new topic that is Ohm's law. In 1827, a German physicist, George Simon Ohm, found out the relationship between the current I, flowing in a metallic wire, and the potential difference V across its terminal. Let us explore this knowledge with a simple activity. Activity. In an activity when I read out the points, please check that with the below given circuit diagram. Set up a circuit diagram as shown in the figure which consists of a nichrome wire XY of a length 0.5 meter. An ammeter is connected in series and a voltmeter which is connected in parallel with the resistance R and one cell of 1.5 volt. Let me tell you the meaning of Nichrome wire. It is an alloy of nickel, manganese, chromium, and iron metal. All of you know that alloy means a mixture of metals. So, here the mixture of nickel, manganese, chromium, iron metal gives nichrome wire. Next, when you switch on, you will get the reading in ammeter and voltmeter. Note down the ammeter reading as well as voltmeter reading in a table given in the next slide. Let us assume ammeter reading as 0.1 amp and voltmeter reading 0.4 volts. Now observe the below circuit diagram where I have connected two cells in a circuit and allow the current to flow when you switch on. Note down the meter reading as well as same time note down the voltmeter reading for the values of a current in a nichrome wire where the potential difference across nichrome wire. Let us consider the value as that is a meter reading I is equal to 0.2 amp and voltmeter reading as 0.8 volts. In a next slide, in a table it is given. A simple note is there. Whenever I use the word XY of resistance R, it is nothing but a nichrome wire of a 0.5 meter length shown with the resistance R. It is just a symbol resistance R. Now, connect three cells in the circuit diagram as shown below. I note the respective readings of the ammeter and voltmeter for the values of current through the nichrome wire and potential difference across nichrome wire. Let us assume those readings as 
zero point three amp and one point two volts respectively. The next point is to observe all the three readings in a table which is given below. That is, when you connect one cell, you have given the reading current as zero point one and potential difference as zero point four volts. Similarly, observe when you connect the second cell, the reading is zero point two amp and zero point eight volts. And the third one, where three cells are connected, and the readings are zero point three amp and one point two volts. If you observe, as we increase or decrease the number of cells, the current also changes. And when you take the ratio of V by I. You will observe in the last column the ratio of volt by ampere is four, and it is constant for all the three values. Let us understand V I graph for a nichrome wire. If you observe last column, you will find that ratio of V and I is a constant value. The values of potential difference and current from the table, if you draw in a x-y plane, you will get a straight line passing through origin, and the slope gives a constant value that is four. Now let us understand the conclusion from an activity and a graph that is. As the potential difference increases, the current also increases. If the potential difference decreases, the current also decreases. So the law says that is Ohm's law. According to Ohm's law, the potential difference V across the ends of the given metallic wire in an electric circuit is directly proportional to the current I flowing through it, provided temperature remains the same. Here, temperature is the condition which has to be constant. Or in other words, we can write V is directly proportional to I. And when we remove proportional to sign, the formula becomes V by I is equal to R, or V is equal to I R, where R is a constant for a given metallic wire at a given temperature and is called its resistance. This is the new physical quantity which is introduced in Ohm's law. And beside, there is a magic triangle which we Helps us to understand the formula or to write the formula. That is, V is equal to I into R. Or if you want to write for current, that is I, I is equal to V by R. Or if you want to write for formula R, R is equal to V by I. Now let us understand a new physical quantity that is resistance. It is the property of a conductor to resist the flow of charges through it. Its SI unit is ohm, and it is represented by a Greek letter ohm. According to Ohm's law, R can be written as V by I. So, one ohm is equal to one volt by one ampere. So, from that we can define one ohm as when the potential difference across the ends of a conductor is one volt and the current through it is one ampere. And again, from Ohm's law, we can write I is equal to V by R. From that, we can say the current is inversely proportional to its resistance. Like, if the resistance is doubled, the current gets halved. In many practical cases, it is necessary to increase or decrease the current in an electric circuit. A component used to regulate current without changing voltage source is called variable resistance or Rheostat. The device rheostat oftenly used to change the resistance of a circuit. We will study about this further classes. Now let us understand Ohm's law by solving some examples. Example 12.3 and 12.4 from textbook. The question is. How much current will an electric bulb draw from a 220 source if the resistance of the bulb filament is 1200 ohm? 
and the same question b is how much current will an electric heater coil draw from a 220 voltage source if the resistance of the heater coil is 100 ohm if you observe both the question 220 volt that is potential difference is same what is changing changing is resistance and asking what is the value of current let us solve a1 in that given V that is potential difference is 220 volts R is 1200 ohm and first we have to find I for that according to Ohm's law I can be written as V by R and V is given 220 volts R is given 1200 substitute in the formula 0 0 get cancel and when you solve it you will get I is equal to 0 0.18 amp now in the B given is 220 volts and resistance is 100 ohm and from ohms law i is equal to v by r and i is equal to 220 volts by 100 volts 0 0 get cancelled 22 by 10 the value is 2.2 amp now let us understand another example that is example 12.4 the question is the potential difference between the terminals of an electric heater is 60 volts when it draws a current of 4 amp from a source. What current will the heater draw if the potential difference is increased to 120 volts? Let us understand the question. The given is when the potential difference is 60 volts, the current is 4 amp. And the potential difference increases to 120 volts, what will be the current? Let us solve that. Write the given that is potential difference is 60 volts, current is 4 amp, resistance value needs to be fine. Substitute in a Ohm's law that is V is equal to IR and R is equal to V by I. V is 60 volts, current I is 4 amp. When you substitute 4 ones are 4 fifteens are that is 15 ohm is the value of resistance. Now if the potential difference is increased to 120 volts, what is the value of I? According to Ohm's law, I is equal to V by R. We substitute the value of potential difference that is V is 120. And resistance 15 Ohm. 15 ones are 15, 15 eights are 120. So the value of current I is 8 Amp. From this, you can understand that as potential difference increases, current also increases. Now let us understand another type of a question based on Ohm's law that is based on graph that is taken from exercise question number 7. It is given that the values of current I flowing in a given resistor for the corresponding values of potential difference V across the resistors are given below. The values of current are 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4 which are in amperes and the potential difference are given 1.6, 3.4, 6.7, 10.2 and 13.2 which is in odds. And ask the people to plot a graph between V and I. Calculate the resistance of that resistor. Let us go for understanding this. Draw the graph by using the given values by considering potential difference on Y axis, current on X axis. If you draw, you will get a straight line passing through origin. And if you consider the slope of that and find the slope, that value is resistance. That is equal to given here. Slope is equal to resistance that is equal to Y intercept by X intercept which you people have learned in 9th class. And substitute that value, Y intercept value was 6.7 minus 3.4 and X intercept value 2 minus 1. And if you substitute the value that is 3.3 and 1, you will get the ratio as 3.3 ohm. That is the resistance is 3.3 ohm. Dear students, you people have learned what is Ohm's law and how to draw the graph for the readings. Based on that, some numericals also. Now the time for worksheet. Worksheet 1 which I have given in the last video, I hope that you people have completed. Now worksheet 2. Very simple questions I have given in this. The first one is define Ohm's law, define, second one is define 1 Ohm and the third question 
which I have given is exactly the previous question which I explained by using the graph. And the question number 4 which I have given just the simple values you have to substitute by using Ohm's law. All the best, complete the worksheet. Bye children.